Congratulations to the 540 undergraduate and 87 graduate students completing their degrees from the University of Maryland School of Public Health. Yay! I'm Dean Boris Lushniak, and today we're celebrating the amazing accomplishments of the class of 2021, the next generation of public health leaders. We all know that this has been a difficult year. In addition to the coronavirus pandemic that we're not yet past, we've been grappling with a pandemic of violence against Black lives, rooted in our country's legacy of institutionalized racism, as well as hateful attacks against Asian Americans. We're facing the devastating reality of the climate crisis and its threats to our health. And we still have yet to enact meaningful gun safety laws that could prevent the tragic deaths of tens of thousands of people lost to gun violence each year. And all of these together have a disproportionate impact on people of color and other marginalized communities. Yet you can't be in public health and not be an optimist. It, it's in our bones. And in the midst of ongoing global challenges, we have reasons for optimism. Now, let's talk about the pandemic. We now have more than 95 million Americans fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Several million more who are partially vaccinated. The work of public health continues to ensure that we reach community immunity. And that means remaining vigilant here and doing what we can to help other nations, to help the global community fight the virus. In Maryland, our lawmakers have just recently passed several measures that support public health and social justice, including a bill establishing health equity resource communities another requiring implicit bias training for healthcare providers, and the Maryland Police Accountability Act, which aims to create greater transparency and accountability for law enforcement. Our academic community has been resilient through the challenges of teaching and learning virtually. I'm so proud of our amazing class of 2021 graduates and all that you have accomplished. You're now emerging into a world that needs bold public health leaders more than ever. And public health is more visible than ever before. We're at a turning point where we must reimagine and reinvigorate our public health infrastructure and lead the way in showing how science must drive decision making. Today, you're graduating from a top ranked school of public health at a milestone moment, and you have the tools to influence real change. Now this past year, I've missed seeing our students in person, but I look forward to how you will make your mark in fearlessly promoting health for all in the future and hope you'll share your successes with us. But don't forget, as you celebrate your graduation, please make sure to thank someone who helped get you where you are today. It could be a teacher, a mentor, a parent, other family member, or a friend. I hope you'll watch our School of Public Health ceremony together with those close to you and celebrate and reflect on all you have learned and are continuing to learn as you embark on the pathway to do what? To do public health good. Thank you for being who you are and congratulations, class of 2021. Congratulations, fellow public health terps. I am so proud to be among you all on this very special day. While today marks our last day spent as undergraduate students, I thought I would share something special told to me on my first. The Diamondback Terrapin is incapable of moving backward. It only strives to move forward. My orientation leader told me this, which stuck with me throughout the course of my four years as a proud kinesiology student in the School of Public Health. Four years made special by a warm community fostered by faculty, advisors, and peers alike. This fact may seem trivial, but the more I thought about it, the more it resonated with me. It encouraged me to give my best effort and to always work to move forward for my future and the future of our world. Recently, I realized this future I have been working towards is here and now. Countless School of Public Health students have stepped up to help fight the COVID-19 pandemic, working as frontline healthcare workers, public health leaders, and in countless other valuable positions. 
Even with the challenges and hardships the pandemic has brought upon the world in academics, finances, and in social and personal arenas, we as students have risen up to create change. We have been an integral part in moving forward. We have used our voices and deliberate actions to bring about positive change, not only fighting COVID-19, but also in fighting against social injustice surrounding race, in fighting for our environment and climate, in fighting against sexual assault, and in fighting for mental health awareness. Essentially, we have used our unceasing voices and deliberate actions to fight for one another. While today may be our last day as School of Public Health students, let us step into the roles of School of Public Health graduates with our fearless ideas and do good attitudes, and like the Diamondback Terrapin, keep moving forward together. Good afternoon. Dean Lushniak, faculty, staff, friends, family members, all those watching locally and abroad, and of course, to my fellow graduates, congratulations to the class of 2021 on today's achievement. Today marks the end of a chapter and the start of a new beginning. This is a remarkable milestone worth celebrating and today I join you not only as a fellow graduate, but as a first generation student and the proud son of immigrant parents from Zacatecas, Mexico. It's worth acknowledging that I am the descendant of farm workers, housekeepers, retail and casino workers that fought for generations to get to this moment. And like many of you, it took a village to say the least. Every step that we take forward, we carry with us the dreams and aspirations of our family, the stories that have been passed down before us, and the hope to succeed for a better tomorrow. We can agree that this may have not been the commencement ceremony that we all anticipated or the circumstances that we desired when we started this program, this past year, we have seen firsthand the challenges of public health and the shortcomings of our society. But let me be upfront and clear, the most valuable thing that we have learned as graduates through our programs and this experience is within the absence of our advocacy. Absence is a powerful word. Simplistically, it just means the state of being non-existent or lack of, but through the lens of public health, we know that our absence of advocacy is a matter between life or death, catastrophe or peace, or even inaction or progress. When we fail to prioritize public health as a society and we are absent from the decisions being made, our work to protect the livelihood of others becomes jeopardized and diminished. That's the lesson that we have learned this past year, and it is one that we must carry with us as we move forward. Fortunately, the University of Maryland has continued to shape our desire to make a difference in this world and to advocate for those who may not have the ability to do so themselves. And as Terps, we have been molded under the concept of fearless ideas. Fearless ideas. Fearless ideas that will shift paradigms, that will break down barriers, and yes, that may finally reach health for all. Take the teachings from our professors and use it as your guidance for how we can reach this milestone. Believe in yourself to do the right thing because without us, our absence is felt in the lives that are lost but could have been prevented. And just like we've seen through this global pandemic, for many of us, there will come a time when our expertise will be silenced, belittled, or threatened. Stand your ground. Use this moment to lead with humility to bring others back into unity, to teach about the work that we conduct and to inform about the longstanding efforts that still lie ahead. That's the baseline of our mission and it's to ensure that true health equity and liberation is achieved. But to do so, we have to be present. We have to stand up for what we believe in and most undoubtedly, we must lead with conviction for what we desire most and that's to ensure that everyone has the ability to live a long and fulfilling life. For me, that moment came just a few short months ago when a vacancy opened in the Nevada State Legislature. I contemplated whether or not this was the right moment for me to apply for this vacancy, or if I even had the adequate expertise to serve my best capacity. I knew that my community was suffering and without my voice, public health would have taken the back seat 
Today, I stand here inside of the legislative building, serving as a Nevada state senator and as one of the youngest legislators in Nevada history. And I'm ready to fight for my family, para mi comunidad, and for all those who have been ignored for far too long. Graduates, the power of this moment lies within our means to act, but we must do so in a manner that brings light to the voices that have been left behind or forgotten. Absence cannot be an excuse for our inaction. It must be our motivation to fix the wrongdoings that we observe. Never forget to cherish every moment, to hug your friends and family members that have stood by your side, and to always build on your education. One last thing. Para mi mamá, mi papá, mis amigos y mi familia, to my mom, my dad, my friends and family. Lo hicimos juntos. Este momento es para ustedes también. We did this together. This moment is for you too. So once again, congratulations to the class of 2021 and may you lead fearlessly onto your next adventure. We're honored to have Delegate Jocelyn Peña Melnick as our commencement speaker this year. She has represented Prince George's and Anne Arundel counties as state delegate for 14 years. She's a strong advocate for her constituents and has led the way on many public health issues for our state. I consider her a great friend of our School of Public Health and her passion for public service is an inspiration to me and I know will be to our graduates. The delegate is vice chair of the Health and Government Operations Committee, chairs the Public Health and Minority Health Disparities Subcommittee, and is a member of the Government Operations and Health Facilities Subcommittee. She's active with the Legislative Black Caucus of Maryland, the Maryland Legislative Latino Caucus, and the Women Legislators of Maryland Caucus. She's an appointed member of the Joint COVID-19 Response Legislative Work Group. Regionally, she serves on the Health Committee of the Council of State Governments, the Eastern Regional Conference, and on the Executive Committee of the National Conference of Hispanic State Legislators. Thank you for your leadership, Delegate Kenya Melnick, and for speaking to the 2021 Class of Public Health Service. Thank you, Dean Lushniak, and distinguished faculty for having me here today. It is my absolute honor to congratulate the incredible University of Maryland School of Public Health class of 2021. You made it. You're here today for a well-deserved celebration. So soak it in, take a deep breath and enjoy the moment. Today is about you. COVID has been tough for all of us. I have lost family to COVID and I'm sure that some of you have too. I lost my father my cousin, and three good friends. But I will not dwell on that today. Where I choose to focus is on the miracle of science and data and communications and logistics that we have witnessed. The miracle I see is one that allow us to recognize a threat such as COVID, understand how it spreads through our community, educate people how to protect themselves, and then manufacture and deliver safe life-saving treatments to millions. Think about what a miracle that is, how many things had to go right, how many people had to do their jobs, and what that says about our ability, and I'm including you in the hour today, yes, our ability to tackle all the public health threats. I am vice chair of the Health and Government Operations Committee in Maryland's General Assembly. That's a mouthful. But what it means in a nutshell is that I work with all of you and many others across the state to make Marylanders healthier. It means finding smarter, more creative ways to deliver healthcare and recognizing health issues earlier so that interventions can begin sooner with less illness, better quality of life and lower cost. I did not start out in public health. I came to this country from the Dominican Republic with my single mom who didn't even finish the third grade of elementary school and my younger sister when I was eight years old. I did not speak English, not a word. I was first in my family to go to college. Maybe that is also true for some of you here today. My background was in law. I was a prosecutor, but I also represented children that were in the foster care system. And when I was elected to the General Assembly, 
I had the fortune of being educated on public health issues. From that, I took on issues like healthcare affordability, implicit bias training for healthcare providers, telehealth, suicide prevention, and many others. And I say this to emphasize that wherever you have begun in life, there's no limit to where you can go. I am honored to be here today. You probably would not be surprised because you are a public health expert, but many ordinary people don't see public health issues everywhere around us. Gun violence, for example, seems like a criminal justice issue or a second amendment freedom issue to many, but we know that most guns death are suicides and suicide is a complex public health problem. And racism, we're still struggling with it so many years after slavery. We know that racism often drives social determinants of health, like access to housing in our healthful community, education and employment, and is a barrier to health equity. Not long ago, I read an article about a nine-year-old girl named Ella who lived near a busy road in Southeast London. She died of asthma contributed to by the exposure to excessive level of air pollution, according to the coroner's court. And listen to this, in the three years before her death, she had multiple seizures and was admitted to the hospital 27 times. And there was also a lack of information given to Ella's mother that possibly contributed to Ella's death. We don't have to go to London for stories like that. We can find them right here in Maryland, right here in College Park in Baltimore City. We can find people that get treatment but don't get better because we're missing the bigger picture or life-saving information is not communicated by healthcare providers. Or when it is communicated, the information is not trusted. I know this, the School of Public Health graduates are well positioned to make a difference on this complex and interconnected issues because you already are doing it. You have been able to learn from some of the world's leading experts in mental health, environmental justice, health equity, and health literacy, among other critical topics. You have the knowledge and skills, but just as importantly, you have the compassion and the heart that is at the core of public health and public service. We know that we can do better for the Ellis of the world and that we must. So I am immensely glad to be with you here today. It's a miracle that I made it. I am immensely glad to see bright, committed people like each of you joining me in the fight for better public health. You know how much work we must do. We need all of your good ideas, all of your energy and your spirit. Don't be shy. Don't hold back. Give it all you got. I know that you can and you must. Please go out and make a difference. Change the world into a better place for all because you can and you will. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this special day. And congratulations once again to the class of 2021. Thank you.